Good morning, and welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Will Joseph. And I'm Tobin Thomas. The AVID program is undergoing evaluation for their renewal of their certification as a national demonstration school. AVID representatives have been monitoring the classes to see how the program is doing. We go to Owen Pixler with more. The AVID program at RHS is going through evaluation for revalidation as an AVID national demonstration school. Representatives from the AVID Center have been observing AVID classes for the last few weeks to determine Roseville's program status as one of the nation's best. The visit is a visit where AVID Center verifies that our school qualifies as a national demonstration school. There are only 210 schools in the country that qualify and we'd like to continue being a learning center as a national demonstration school. AVID co-coordinator Melissa Johnson believes that national demonstration status benefits the program as a whole. If the revalidation visit doesn't go through, we would certainly still hold ourselves to a high standard, but I think I speak on behalf of the AVID teachers when I say when we have this status, it really makes us work harder to make sure that our students are college and career ready and we're doing all they can, all we can for them to be ready. Some students in the program enjoy the activities and advising the program provides to RHS and believe it is helpful in preparing them for college and beyond. Um, I personally really like the AVID program. Uh, they help me so much with scholarships and applications. Um, I think it's a very helpful program for students as like it helps us get organized and educates us, educates us a lot about college. Our AVID seniors last year did outstanding work and had really favorable outcomes. So 95% of our AVID seniors last year completed four-year A through G requirements to qualify for a four-year college. We had 100% apply to four-year colleges and 92% were accepted into four-year colleges. So our goal is to make sure students are college and career ready and we feel like we're doing a really good job at that. In other news, the first showing of RHS's fall play, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. There will also be a showing on October 19th at 7 p.m. and on October 21st at 2 p.m. I'm really excited. Um, there's definitely been a few little bumps here and there, like getting stuff ordered and getting it here on time, but luckily everything seems to be pretty in place, so I'm really excited. Come see the show. It's going to be really fun. And now we go over to Addison Mayhong with sports. Good morning, and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of VOTSN. I'm Addison Mahon. Last Saturday, Varsity Boys Water Polo had a flawless performance at the Dixon Jamboree Tournament. They finished the tournament undefeated, going 3-0 with wins against Bella Lista, El Camino, and Monterey Trail. Sophomores Hudson Bales and Ashton Chang paved the way for Roseville's dominance. Bales led the Tigers in goals with six, and Ashton Chang was a threat on defense with nine steals. Senior goalie Chase Jackson had 25 saves while only allowing seven goals the entire tournament. Uh, we try not to focus on stats too much, comparing ourselves to each other. I mean, it was just so happened that that was me today, it's other guys the other days, and it was just really overall team effort. Tonight, they will look to continue their winning streak at their senior night against Oakmont. Boys water polo weren't the only Tigers who copped a win since our last show. To no one's surprise, Roseville dominated River Valley 30-12. On only three completions, quarterback Mason Susnara had 93 yards and a passing touchdown. Aaron Salas had 87 rushing yards on 14 carries with a rushing touchdown. Joel Bradley only had one catch, but it was a big one, going 68 yards to the house. Kanan Padone also had an impressive 10 total tackles on the night. The Tigers look to keep their momentum against Indercom this Friday. Before we go, here's the game schedule for this week. Today, girls tennis and girls volleyball host Yuba City, and both boys and girls water polo have their senior night versus Oakmont. Tomorrow, girls flag football face the creek at home. And on Thursday, girls tennis and girls volleyball host Bella Vista. Our next edition of Top Plays is coming soon. Submit your highlights by scanning the QR code on the screen or heading to the link in our Instagram bio to be featured on the show. And that's all on your home for Rose High School Sports, Top Plays, Breakdowns and More, I have a Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Addison. It was quite the weekend for influencer boxing fans as crossover boxing promotion Misfits Boxing held their biggest event yet, having names like Alex Wasabi, Slim, Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis, KSI, and the quote-unquote real boxer Tommy Fury. Now one very unpopular opinion about this event is the fact that it is the most entertaining boxing event I've seen all year. I mean seriously, where else can you find a 10 second knockdown due to an ankle injury, or even 50 plus security guards storming the ring 
like me trying to get a muffin during war. Anyways, this event had so much anticipation, and while the entertainment factor did deliver, the boxing factor, however, not so much. Since June, I've been patiently waiting to see Dylan Dennis and Logan go at it. I thought it was going to be an absolute bloodbath, but boy were my hopes dropped faster than Swarm's was in that first round. Anyway, Dermot averaged 12 punches thrown and 2 punches landed per round. Even I can do better than that. Ultimately, Dennis was disqualified due to the attempted guillotine that miserably failed by the way, resulting in my favorite clip of the entire fight. My name is Earl Whitaker, and now we go back to news. Thanks, Noah. One student has found a tasteful way to raise money. We go to Ethan McDowell with more. Junior Jaden Doobie has been selling chocolate around campus for his younger brother's school fundraiser. He receives a wide variety of chocolate to sell around the school, and has high hopes of raising more money. I am selling the chocolate for two dollars. Entire menu is two dollars. I have caramel. I have almond, I have wafer, I have crisp, rice crisp, I have continental almond and continental pecan bites. Last year, I raised, I think about $100, $120 on chocolate, and this year I'm hoping to raise about maybe like $150, $200, it's all about them goals. Jaden's brothers attend Valley Christian with one of them being in the second grade and the other being in the fourth grade, who are the main reason why he decided to start selling his chocolate. It's from my brother's school. They have a pretty rundown school over there in East Roseville, so I was thinking I could do anything to help out. Jaden has a very direct way of selling chocolate that he does on campus, where he walks around and approaches people who seem interested. I approach people with my little bag of chocolate, and I ask, a very basic question. I want to buy some chocolate. Nine times out of ten, people will be interested and they'll actually engage. And five times out of ten, people will have actually money. So, please, if you see me in the halls, come ask for some chocolate. I'll hook you up with some good chocolate. World's finest. Trust. Thanks, Ethan. That's it for us today on I the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at iTheTigerNews.com. See you next time.